Welcome back to the Unleashed Podcast. I'm your host, Mandela. I'm so excited to be back after a couple of weeks of a break. Um, much needed. You know, my life and my family has been full, exciting, also hard. Uh, I'm human. Though I'm a pastor and though I'm here sharing truth to you and challenging you to grow, I need it just as much as anybody else, and so does my family. So we go through unique challenges and hardships, financial difficulties, and so it was very important for me to take an intentional time um, and still continue to take intentional time to really work on different things in my life, and I challenge you to do the same. Thank you for tuning in. I'm really excited for what God has put on my heart to share with you and those of you who are listening. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day, whether in your car, at home, or you're watching on YouTube. Thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Let's dig into what God has in store. I believe it's a word that will change your life if you're willing to put it into practice, all right? So get ready, get set, let's get going. So here at the Unleashed Podcast, if you're joining for the first time, my heart's desire is to really challenge you to put your faith into action. I want to help you grow in your faith. I want to help you move from being uh, like a baby that's stuck on milk. You know, the Bible uses that term in the book of Hebrews. Some of us are still on milk, meaning the, the basic stuff of Christianity and faith, and we're not moving on towards maturity. A baby doesn't stay a baby forever. It needs more than just milk. It needs meat and vegetables and other substances that it will help uh, this child to grow and develop to be strong and healthy. It's the same thing in our spiritual journey to grow in our relationship with God and others and to have an impact that goes beyond just the physical. If you want to see people's souls be set free, if you want yourself to be set free and move forward in confidence, if you want to see this world have a greater impact for love and truth and kindness and joy and eternal well-being, you want to grow in your faith and mature in your faith, and you need the right tools. You need to understand the Word of God that will give you what you need to move forward in your faith and relationship with God. So I'm excited. My heart's desire is to help you. So wherever you're at, whether you are just starting this journey as a Christian, whether you've been a Christian for a long time and you're stuck and you're just looking for help, I want to I support you. That's what I'm here for. I'm committed each week on these podcasts uh, to support you in your spiritual journey, okay? So I challenge you, don't just listen. Don't just be a person who hears the word and doesn't be a doer of the word. We're going through a series in my church at Riverside Community Church called the Book of James. The Book of James in the Bible, small book but powerful. It's all about putting your faith into action. If And it actually says, if you just hear the word but don't do it, you, you're really wasting your time and you're wasting a lot of other people's time and your faith, that's meaningless. It's not, it's not going to see beautiful results over time, okay? It's like looking in the mirror, James says. It's like going to the mirror. You look at yourself and you walk away and you completely forget what you look like. That's how bad it is when you just listen to a, a Sunday sermon or a podcast and you don't do anything about it. And I've been there. So put what you hear into practice and you're going to grow tremendously. Little steps, one day at a time. So, Let's jump into today's topic. I want to focus in again on the mind. We've talked about the mind before on this podcast, and you were going to come back to the mind a lot because everything we do is filtered through this mind, okay? Everything you do in life is filtered through your mind. The decisions you make, your imaginations, the choices you make, all that goes through the work of the mind. The mind is so powerful. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we've touched on this before, but today I want to focus on a specific passage in the Bible that deals with your thinking, your thoughts, I want to help you continue to learn how to take control of your thoughts, especially the way the Bible speaks of, uh, 
of how you can do that in your spiritual journey, in your in your walk with God and in this world. You have authority through Christ to take control of your thoughts, and you will hear this even in secular books from other phenomenal and uh, really good um, authors out there about the the uh, power of your mind and how you can take authority over your mind. But I want to show you from a spiritual perspective why this is so important and how you can start doing that today. So let's jump in and let's read the Word of God together because it's not Mandela's idea. It's not my good idea. It's not for me to take credit. This is the Word of God because I've told you this before and I'm going to say it again in this podcast. Just like Jesus said in John chapter 8, and it's around verse 33, 34. Read John chapter 8, verse 33, 34, 35, in that area. Jesus says, if you abide in my word, that's the word of God. If you abide in God's word, the word abide means to hang out, to spend time, to really like really have quality time learning and reading and listening to the word of God. If you hang out with God's word, He says, then I know you truly are my disciples. It's a great test to know if you truly want to follow Jesus. You can say it, but if you're a real follower of Jesus, you're in the word of God. Test number one. But he goes on to say something even better. He says, you are truly my disciples if you abide and hang out in my word. He says, but then you will know the truth. The truth meaning you will know the truth, what is reality, what is good, what is God's ordained purpose, what is good and true. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So if you want to live a life of freedom in a greater measure, whether it's in mental health issues, whether it's something going on from your past that you can't let go of, whether it's an addiction, if you want the truth about your situation that you're trying to figure out, in your relationship, your future, your whatever it is that you want to know the truth about that could lead to freedom and peace and confidence, you need to be in the Word of God. Because if you go into the Word, you will get the truth about that situation, and God will show you how to apply that into your life so you can walk out in victory and freedom. So this is why I keep taking you to the Word of God each week when we go through these podcasts, because I want you to know that it's from God's Word that I take the truth that I want to share with you and challenge you to live by. So get your Bibles, or if you're driving, please drive safely. Just take note of it after that you, when you're finished, to come back and review. But I want you to take note of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. If you are able to turn to a Bible, go to your Bible or your Bible devices and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 3 to 5. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 3 to 5 together, okay? It says this, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts And teach them to obey Christ. You know what I love about this section of scripture? It uses a lot of military language, okay? I'm not like huge into the whole military scene, and uh, I've never been a person who wanted to join the army or that, but it does fascinate me. I mean, you know, I love a good war movie. I love a good war TV series. Actually, recently I watched this series on Amazon Prime called The Terminal List. It has Chris Pratt in it. Some people might not like it, but I loved it. And Chris Pratt, he's playing a Navy SEAL. And Navy SEALs are part of the Navy, and they're a special ops team, special operations. They get trained. They're some of, their training is some of the hardest and rigorous training in the world. To become a Navy SEAL is not for the faint-hearted. You got to go through a lot of serious mental tests of um, endurance, ability, strength, uh, teamwork. Uh, Some people have found their modes of training not very good, and I'm not here to critique whether it should be appropriate or not. I'm not. This is not what the podcast is all about. You can have an argument with somebody else about that. 
All I'm saying is when I was watching this series and I'm watching this guy and what he had to go through as a Navy SEAL and through this series, you see different combats and different situations where he's had to use certain specific weapons and military attack or Navy t uh, SEAL tactics that uh, required very important styles and weaponry. And it was effective, not only because he knew what weapons to use, but he also had the training and experience and the discipline to implement it when he was dealing with opposition. You and I are going to deal with opposition on a daily basis. This is not to discourage you. This is to just wake you up into reality if you haven't noticed yet. And I know for most of us listening to this or watching this, you understand that you face opposition and you have conflicts in your life that happen from all kinds of different arenas. Whether that conflict or opposition is coming from your home, that could be in your relationship with your spouse, that could be the conflict and opposition you find with your children, that could be a conflict and opposition you find in your school with your friendships, your coworkers at work, your boss, the conflict that you have with your neighbors, your neighborhood that you live in, on the road when you're driving and you got other drivers, can I get an amen, you know what I'm saying? That other person who drives terrible God forbid, oh my goodness, because you're the best driver, right? You never mess up. But no, we have conflict opposition. But it can go very much deeper than that. Maybe it's the conflict and the opposition you had in your past. That a person who bullied you for so many years. That abuse that you faced when you were younger from the hands of somebody you loved and trusted. That job that you hoped to get but you didn't get. Though you were promised, though you had all the right qualifications, they didn't give it to you. And now you're angry, you're bitter. That person who you loved but betrayed you, betrayed your trust. That faith or religion or that place that you went in community and you hoped that it would be a place that was safe, that you would thrive, but in the end, it did the opposite. It did more harm to you than good. Conflict and opposition will come in many different forms and in many different ways. How do you deal with it? How do we train like the Navy SEAL, like Chris Pratt in Terminal List? Where do we get our training? What kind of weapons do we use to deal with the conflict that happens in our lives? Because the conflict that you face is going to mess with your mind. And at the core, uh, how do I put it? At the core of it in your mind, it's the thoughts. It's, it's how you approach that situation with your thinking. Okay, what am I saying here? Because I know some of you might be lost in this moment, but I need, you to, I need you to stick with me. When you go through conflict, when you go through difficulties in your life, it messes with your mind. And you and your mind, your thinking, and what you choose to do with your thoughts and your thinking about that situation and how it's going to affect your life is up to you. You don't always have control of the external circumstances. You might get hurt and abused by a bully, an abuser, a friend who hurts you and betrays you. There are situations that can happen in your life, in your school, your coworkers, your boss, promises not made, uh, disappointments, um, certain situations that may happen to you out of your control. But what you always have control over is how you choose to respond to that situation. And I'm not saying it's easy. It's actually very hard when you're going through a lot of painful circumstances, especially the loss of a loved one. You might be grieving from the loss of a loved one, and you're angry with God. You're bitter. You're confused. There's so many things that will impact our lives that become a point of conflict in our mind. And how do we deal with the thoughts, especially if those thoughts are consuming us and weighing us down for moving forward in life? If they're keeping us in a sense of para we're paralyzed or, or not even just paralyzed. Some of us actually go off and be successful in different ways, but we still have this deep problem in our mind and our heart that we tuck away and hide that actually eventually becomes a real poison in our life. So even some of you who are like, man, Mandela, my life is good. I got money. I'm successful. School's going well. But there's this unresolved conflict in your mind about that person, about what you did, and you haven't dealt with those thoughts. That is just a little seed that is going to continue to grow and germinate and become a, a huge forest down the road in your life if it's, un, uh, if it's not checked 
and left unresolved and unchecked, it will be a serious problem. So that's why I'm here. I want to help you, and I want to show you, according to the Word of God, of what we just read, how to deal with these conflicts that plague your mind, that rule your thoughts, and um, keep you in a place of, of, honestly, paralysis, disappointment, regret, resentment, you name it, and you're not able to move forward. How do we deal with those thoughts in our minds? Well, I want us to go back to the Word of God. If you go back to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, verse 3, it says, We are human. So just, to, just so in case you forgot, in case you forgot you're human, Paul here reminds you, we are human. <laughs> we are human, but the but is important. But we don't wage war as humans do. This is so important. This is so key. Because the temptation is to try to deal with your situation as a Christian, because primarily I'm speaking to Christians, because Paul is writing to believers. This is for you who are children of God who have said, I've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, I want to challenge you. How do you deal with the issues and the conflicts in your life? It's going to be different than the way the world does. That's why he says, we don't wage war as humans do. It's not like the Navy SEALs. It's not like the military. It's not like how your school tells you how to do it. It's not like how your counselor tells you how to do it. Though they may have some good ideas, though they may have some good suggestions, though they may not be completely wrong, if it's not rooted in God's word and truth to deal with the conflict, then you're always going to be missing out on an important aspect of dealing with that issues in your mind. We use God's mighty weapons. Verse 4, we use God's mighty weapons. I'm going to keep repeating that because it's so important, and this is so key for this podcast today. We use God's mighty weapons. What that's telling you is that there is weapons that you can pick up that the world will turn to to deal with their conflict to deal with the battle, to face that issue in their mind, those thoughts, those things that they're arguing within their thought life. And how do I deal with that bully? How do I deal with that issue? How do I deal with this in my marriage? We're going to pick up weapons that the world will offer you, but they will not fully deal with the problem that's going on the inside of you. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. So you see that? We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So what is this saying? You might be experiencing a stronghold in your life right now. Again, using military language in this section, a stronghold was the idea of like, this is like a, a when you are in the defense and you're barricading and protecting from something else. It's like a prison. You're, you've, you've been barricaded into a prison where you can't bust out of that prison to keep your enemy on the inside in that prison, in that stronghold, that thing that protects uh, uh, people from coming in and keep people from coming out. A stronghold is to keep the, the, the situation, that person or that thing inside from external forces, okay? You might be having a stronghold right now in your mind where you are dealing with a conflict of an issue that you experienced in your past and you're bitter and there's some serious bitter and resentment and you're having a hard time forgiving that person. Unforgiveness is a stronghold because you are so hurt. You are burned so bad and you're wondering, how do I truly forget this person? And those thoughts will replay in your mind over and over again throughout your life. Sometimes you have good weeks. Sometimes you might have good months. But that person, that situation comes back and it just cripples you. It gets you angry and it gets you so bitter and resentful. And you might be so justified in your anger because it was a really terrible situation. I'll tell you from experience, I've been there. I have been crippled by the stronghold of unforgiveness, where in my mind, in my human reasoning, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't say, how can I possibly forgive this person who really hurt me that bad? I had a person in a position of trust who was like a father figure to me and a father figure to my wife, Alex, who deeply hurt us. How do I, in my human reasoning, truly forgive a person like that. In my own sense, in my own ways, I couldn't. 
if I look to the weapons of the world to try to deal and combat this issue in my mind, I tried. It didn't work. In fact, I did the opposite. I started turning to other vices to deal with the problems in my mind, thinking that that's going to help, but left me more broken and empty. It might not be unforgiveness for you. It might be for you, uh, um, it might be trauma. It just might be a trauma because you witnessed something that was so bad and you don't know how to resolve that trauma that you saw, that you witnessed. Maybe something you did, you can't even forgive yourself. Maybe it's something you have done and you're ashamed of. Maybe it's shame. You carry this stronghold in your mind of shame. You can't even reason. You cannot, in human reasoning, deal with this. The stronghold in your mind, you cannot deal with that pain. Maybe it was a sudden loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a failure. You have this stronghold of failure. You constantly see yourself as a failure, and you don't seem to be able to move forward in life. You can't move forward because you have this stronghold in your mind. Maybe the stronghold for you is um, just the lack of, of, of wisdom. You don't feel like you have enough understanding or wisdom or knowledge to move forward in life. So you just put yourself down. You feel inadequate. And maybe that's a better term for you. You have this stronghold of inadequacy. You just seem, keep looking at yourself. I'm inadequate. I cannot seem to move forward in my life. I'm not able to capable to do this. Maybe it's a poverty mindset. I don't know what it is for you. You fill in the blank. A stronghold is whatever you feel a prisoner to in your mind. Fill in the blank. Whatever you feel a prisoner to, whatever you feel a prisoner to in your mind has become a stronghold. And that human reasoning to try to figure it out in your own wisdom, in your own strength has not worked, has it? With the world, it may have gone for good for a little while. You might have these moments of happiness, but it hasn't dealt with the root of the issue. But we got to use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down. Because God wants to knock down the thing that has kept you a prisoner for far too long. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. There's obstacles that will come your way that will keep you from a place of victory and freedom to be in a place of victory and freedom. There's things in your life that will come to really push you from knowing God. Well, God has given you the tools, the weapons that you need. They're not worldly. They're from God to help break down the strongholds in your minds to help deal with the obstacles that get in the way from you knowing God, to give you what you need so you can become free and walk in authority, confidence, boldness, security. That's what God wants to give you. And I believe you can have that starting even today. It's a work. It's a work because you got to be committed to the process of each day doing something with God, okay? It's God's power. It's his hand, it's his weapons, but you have to take authority of your thoughts. That's why Paul says, we capture their rebellious thoughts. Again, using military terms, you know, it's taking like a prisoner of war captive that has rebelled against you, against the kingdom. There are enemies of God that are against you and his kingdom. That is the devil and his forces of darkness. That's why he says we don't wage war like the world does. Most of the world chooses to ignore the idea of God, or there's a lot of false gods out there. But as for us who believe in the one and only true God and his son Jesus, we understand that there is an enemy of our souls called the devil. And what he wants to do is to keep you a prisoner in your mind with all kinds of things. Because if he can keep you stuck, then you're ineffective. You're not able to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. You will stay a slave to whatever it is that is going on in your mind, a prisoner, and that stronghold will keep you from being powerful, from being confident, from being free. You need the weapons that come from God, and you need to take authority of your thoughts. That's why it says capture your thoughts. Well, how do we do that? You're asking me, Mandela, how do we do that? That's a great question. It starts with 
prayer. It starts with prayer. And I know that might seem like a cliche answer for the Christian, but that is your greatest source to the, the, the source of all life. You need to position yourself with God first. You need to be willing to humble yourself and come under the mighty hand of God and be honest, be real with him, with where you're at, and let him speak into your life. So prayer is your relational communication with God. It's your direct line to the one who has the weapons in the first place. If you're not praying on a consistent basis, then you're actually opening up yourself to be vulnerable to the work of the enemy, to keep you blinded, to keep you stuck. He has no power over you as a Christian. When you became a Christian, a child of God, the devil has no authority or power over your life. You are free in Christ. But what happens is he convinces you of lies about yourself. I'm a failure. I'm, uh, I'm, an, I'm always going to be anxious all the time. I'm going to stay stuck in my depression. I'll never be able to forgive that person. I'll never be able to be forgiven. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an idiot. I'm disgusting. I have all this shame that I will never be able to let go of. Whatever it is for you that you feel a prisoner to, the enemy will feed you those lies, and then you actually keep yourself in a state of prison, and this stronghold comes over your mind. And that's how he keeps you from being ineffective for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. The devil has no power over your life. I need you to hear that. The devil has no power and authority over your life as a Christian. If you're watching this and you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the enemy of your soul has free reign absolutely free reign. That's what he runs this world. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of this air. Further from the, the, the systems of this world are run by the enemy. That's why so many people get stuck in depression, crippled by fear, so many divisions in our world. That's why there's so much darkness and evil in this world, because the enemy of our soul, the devil, runs this world. But there is a God in heaven, who says he is here to bring his kingdom. Jesus says to pray this, your kingdom come, God's authority and reign to come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is why prayer is important. When the disciples went to Jesus and says, teach us how to pray, his first statement says, our father in heaven, he says to you and I, and he's saying this to you who are watching and listening. He says, pray like this, our father, a good God in heaven, Holy is your name. That means he's set apart. That means there's nobody else like him. He can do what nobody else can do. He's holy. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. That is inviting the God of all creation, his authority and rule and reign to come into your situation, into your mind, into your life, and to dismantle the lies. You got to take authority. He's given it to you through Christ Jesus. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's given you authority over your mind and over the enemy and his attacks of his lies over you. That's why you got to stand firm. So my prayer for you and my challenge for you starting today is to carve out out time to be in the presence of God. That means be alone with him. Talk to him. Be honest with him. Tell him what's going on in your mind, in your heart, in your world, the conflicts, the things you feel prisoner to. Speak it out loud to him. Say, God, this is what's going on in my world. This is my battle. This is my stronghold. But your word says, and I want you to say this to God. Say, God, your word says that though the, I am in this world, I'm not fighting like the way the world does. I'm not waging war like the world does. My battle, I know, God, it belongs to you. You said you've given me weapons. You, God, have given me weapons to wage war against the enemy. You have given me weapons. It says mighty weapons, and I need you to repeat that out loud wherever you are. You got mighty weapons to fight against the strongholds in your mind, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's in fear, insecurity, you name it. God has given you mighty weapons to dismantle them, to give you authority so that you can move forward and act and, and live the life God has created you to live in this world. you got to pray. You've got to talk to God and invite him into the situation and take authority. How do you take authority in your prayer? Declare it out loud. Speak it over your situation. Speak it over your mind. It says capture your thoughts. So that means you say, my thoughts 
Oh, if it's the thoughts that it's going towards sexual immorality, sexual perversion, whether it's a sexual, any addictions, whether it's you're prone to go to down to a place that is not good, you can take those thoughts captive. And in the name of Jesus, you say, I take those thoughts captive and I bring them to the obedience of Christ. It says here to obey Christ. He is commander in chief. He is the one who's in control, but you've got to partner with him in prayer. Everybody say prayer. You've got to pray. Talk to God. He is waiting on you. He wants to give you what you need. You're not alone. So that's my challenge for you this week. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Read it in its context. Understand that it hits on many different levels of our thinking, of our, our struggles in our mind, the conflicts we face. You've got to make a decision for yourself today. What am I going to do with those thoughts that come into my mind? Am I just going to let them rule me and feel defeated by them? Well, or will I talk to God and I will invite him into the situation and I'm going to take authority with my lips and my mind and my heart and I'm going to tell my thoughts to obey Christ and you watch those lies go. You watch those, oh, those confusions in your mind leave because God is here to help you walk in victory. Amen? So that's my encouragement for you. You can take authority of your thoughts today. Would you help somebody else do the same? Would you share this podcast with them? I want to help others move forward in victory. I I really ask that you would share this with somebody today and let them know that they can also take their thoughts captive in the name of Jesus Christ. For as Christians, we sometimes forget what we have available to us. I hope you are reminded and put it into practice this week. So please leave a review on whatever podcast you're listening to, uh, streaming uh, podcast you're listening to, or watching on, comment, let me know what you think, and email me. If you got any questions or you have any responses, anything, whether even you disagree, I want to know your thoughts. You can email me at Mandela. And at our side, sorry, this is Mandela at gmail.com. This is Mandela at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. I can't wait to hear what God is doing in your life. We'll see you next week, Monday, and we got more good things coming your way. All right, take care. Get ready, get set, get going. (laughs) 